Hello, Saints. Happy holiday. Welcome to Wednesday Prayer and Bible Study. And I'm so glad that y'all came out to hear the Word of God. And what we've been teaching on is uh, the book of John. And our, we started this with our master text at John 4.42, when Jesus said he must go through Samaria. And you know, the Jews, they didn't want to go through Samaria. They always went around Samaria. But Jesus wanted to go through Samaria because he had to talk to a woman at a well. And he says here in that fourth chapter of John, the 42nd verse, it says, Then they, the Samaritans, said to the woman, the woman at the well, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. And we've been going through chapter after chapter in this book of John so that we could hear Jesus for ourselves. Because that's how you know who God is, is by his word. And another way that you can know who God is is by His Holy Spirit. When you become a believer, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And by those two things, by His Word and by His Holy Spirit, you will know the truth. And this is why I can say, I know I'm saved. <laughs> Praise God, I know I'm saved. And you can be able to say that too, I know I'm saved because you have heard Jesus for yourself, and you know that he is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Last week, we were in the 14th chapter of John, and we were talking about, um, do not let your heart be troubled. And during this holiday season, a lot of people's heart do get troubled about different things that have happened in their life and things that are happening right now in their life. But he says, do not let your heart be troubled. He wants you to, tr if you trust in God, he said, trust in me also. And where we left off was at that sixth verse in the 14th chapter. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life and no one comes to the Father but through me. And we left off there and what we want to do today is talk about the Father revealed because a lot of people don't really realize who the Father is. and. When you look at the Holy Scriptures, we see that the Father is a, not a name for God, Jehovah, the Lord. In the seventh verse, it says, um, If you had really known me, you would also have known my Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Praise God, that was Thomas who was wanting to know something. But he says, if you had really known me, when you look at John 1.18, it tells us something. John, the first chapter, the 18th verse, it says, no one has seen God, his essence, his divine nature at any time. The one and only begotten God, that is the unique son who is in the imminent presence of the father. He has explained him and interpret and revealed the awesome wonder of the father. So it's 
the Son that reveals the Father to us. And it tells us from now on we're going to, we should know this. This is what he's saying here. From now on you know him and have seen him. So what is he talking about? He's talking to us as believers and he's talking to also unbelievers. When you skip ahead in this chapter to the 16th verse, Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby to be with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart, because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continuously and will be in you. Once you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are saved and you receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on to read, because he was saying he don't want you to be troubled because he's going away. He said, I will not leave you as an orphan, comfortless, bereaved, and helpless. I will come back to you. So Jesus is coming back to us, and it says, after a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. On that day, when that time comes, you will know for yourself that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. A lot of us know that already, that Jesus is in the Father, and that we're in Jesus, and Jesus is in us. Praise God for your holy word. When you go back to this 8th verse, it says, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and then we will be satisfied. A lot of people want to visually see something before they're satisfied and they believe that it's real. He said, show us the Father. <laughs> Go with me to Psalm 24. Because this word tells us everything that we need to know. In Psalm 24, this is a Psalm of David. David says something here. It says in the third verse, Who may ascend into the mountain of the Lord, and who may stand in his holy place? And then he says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to what is false, nor has sworn, sworn oaths deceitfully. So you have to have a clean hands and a pure heart in order to see God. Now Matthew tells us something about this. Jesus, when he was teaching in Matthew in the fifth chapter, it tells us, uh, in the second verse, and he began to teach them, saying, Jesus is our teacher. Amen. I'm just a representative of Jesus. And you know, when you hang around a person long enough, you'll start talking like them. And with me, I, I, what I do, I have found out something, that what you keep your eyes on, that's what's going to get into your mind. Your eyes is a doorway into your mind 
and your mind is a doorway into your spirit. So what you got your eyes on, that's what you're going to be minding. If you got your eyes on the world, that's what your mind is going to be on. If you got your eyes on the word, which is spiritual, Jesus said that in John 6, 63, that his word is spiritual. Amen. Then your spirit will be fed because your mind is on spiritual things and that's feeding your spirit. That the mind is a doorway to your spirit. Now it tells us here in Matthew the eighth, fifth chapter, the eighth verse, because he says, "Show us." Jesus says, "Bless anticipating God's presence, spiritual mature, or the pure in heart." Those who integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. So you will see God if you keep your heart right. Amen. Now when you go back to the 14th chapter, John, because what we do over here, we read a verse and then we don't give you all the reference verses. Basically what I do, I let the Holy Spirit lead me and what he would have me to say because he knows who's going to be looking at these videos and who's over here listening to the Word of God. You always get more when you come to uh, listen to the Word of God at where we're at when you... Um, Take time out of your busy day at 12 noon on Wednesday to come to prayer and Bible study. Then the Holy Spirit can say things to you that I'm not saying because God can take a word and he knows that one word can just open up more light and revelation and understanding in your life. By you looking at these videos, it can do the same thing too. Now he says here, in the ninth verse of this 14th chapter, Jesus said to them, I have been with you for a long time, and you do not know me yet, Philip, nor recognize clearly who I am. Everyone who has seen me has seen the Father, how can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus has said, if you have seen him, you have seen the Father. And when you look at Hebrews, the first chapter, here's what it says in his holy word. Because this is what we stand on is his word. And then... We know through his word, the Holy Spirit is revealing all the truth that we need to know about what we're talking, what the word is talking about. In Hebrews, the first chapter, the third verse, it says, The Son is the radiant and only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being, the brilliant light of the divine and the exact you hear that and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his father's essence and upholding and maintaining and propelling all things the entire physical and spiritual universe by his powerful word Carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal when he himself and no other has by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin accomplished purification from sin and established our freedom from guilt. He sat down revealing his complete work at the right hand of the majesty on high, revealing his divine authority. So it's Jesus. It's Jesus who is 
the perfect imprint of his father. <laughs> Praise God. When you go back to the 14th chapter, the 10th verse, it says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? How many people do not believe that? That the Father and Jesus are one. It says, my own, it says, the words, it's important, the words I say to you, I do not say on my own initiative or authority, but the Father abiding continuously in me does the works, his attesting miracles and acts of power. So Jesus is saying these words are coming right from his father that he's saying. And plus he's saying that the works that he does, his works, his attaining miracles and acts of power, they are from the father too. Praise God. Praise God. And he says, believe. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? Well, it tells us this in John, in his word, John the first chapter. The first verse says, In the beginning, before all times, was the word Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All, you hear that? All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him not even one thing was made that has come into being. So everything you see here, comes from God through Jesus Christ. Amen. And then it says the words. Jesus said he didn't, he's not speaking on his own authority. He's just saying things that God has told him to say. Now in John the third chapter, when you look at this, this is, you know, telling you that you got to be born again in order to receive this gift from God, you, you have to hear the gospel and repent. Amen? You have to confess your sins and repent and, and receive Christ as your Savior for the forgiveness of your sins. It's talking about a new birth here in the third chapter, but when you get down to the end of it, verse 31 says, he, he who comes from heaven above is above all others. He who is of the earth is from the earth and speaks about things of the earth. His viewpoints and experience are earthly. He who comes from heaven is above all. What he has actually seen and heard of what of that he testifies, and yet no one accepts his testimony as true. There's a lot of people who don't receive his testimony as true. And it says, uh, whoever receives his testimony has set his seal of approval to this, God is true, and he knows that God cannot lie. So, if you believe Jesus, Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. So, if you believe that, because we know that God cannot lie. He cannot lie. And then it says, for he whom God has sent, that's Jesus, 
speaks the word of God, proclaiming the Father's own message. For God gives the gift of the Spirit without measure, generously and boundlessly. So Jesus, when he was on earth, he had the complete Holy Spirit working with him. And what was the works that he done? His works tells us this in Acts. You remember when Acts, the 10th chapter, when Peter was down there at Cornelius' house? He says something here in the 10th chapter of Acts. The 38th verse, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with great power. So it was God who anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with great power. And it says, He, Jesus, went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. That was this is the works that Jesus did while he was on earth, was healing people that were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is not good. <laughs> Being sick is, is not God's will for you in your life. God wants you to be healed. Amen. And he has provided a way for us to be healed. And that way of healing is in Christ Jesus. When you accept Christ Jesus, and when you receive his gospel, his good news, you also receive healing at the same time, which a lot of people don't know. They have received the gospel. They have received forgiveness of their sins but they are a little slow in receiving the healing part. They're still, you know, walking around here with different infirmities and sicknesses and illness and bedridden and all kinds of things going on in their life. That is oppression of the devil. That's not God's will for your life. God's will for your life is for you to be healed. Now, go back with me to John 14 chapter. It says here in the 11th verse, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the very works themselves which you have witnessed. These works, these miracles, these works, it tells us that is attesting miracles and acts of power. That's the works of God. It's a miracle when somebody gets healed. I mean, I went through this in my own life when, when I, the God healed me. When I had a heart attack, everybody else was had fear around them, but what I had was faith in God that I was going to be healed, and I was healed. In the name of Jesus, praise God, it was because of what Jesus has done for me in my life that I knew that if he forgave me of my sins, that he could also heal me of all my diseases. And, and I received that work of God in my life by standing here right now, healed. Amen. And he said here in this 11th verse, otherwise, hmm. he says, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, otherwise believe me because of the very works. Otherwise believe because of the very works. When you look at John the fifth chapter, The 32nd verse, John 5, 36, it testifies of the works. It says, but the testimony which I have is 
far greater than the testimony of John and the works that the Father has given me to finish the very same works that is the miracles and proofs of my dignity that I am now doing testify about me and proving evidence that the Father has sent me. The works are the evidence that Jesus was sent by God. And you know, when even Nicodemus said that in the third chapter, he said, when he came to Jesus by night, he said, can nobody be doing this, all this that you're doing unless God is with him? And that's the same way in our life, we can't do nothing unless God is with us. Amen. There's nothing that you can do on your own because we are, are the earth and, and the only thing we know is earthly things. But when you get Jesus into your life, he starts giving you understanding and revelation of spiritual things that the world cannot understand. Now, when I had my heart attack, how did I get healed? It was through prayer. That's the first thing that I did. I had communion with the Lord through the Lord Jesus Christ. I asked God what was going on and what to do. That's what we all need to do when something happens in our life. Don't run to your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your girlfriend, boyfriend, none of that. Go straight to God. And right here in this 12th verse, it says, um, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do. And he will even, he will do even greater things than these in extent and outreach because I am going to the Father. So Jesus is telling us that what he did in the Gospels that we can do also. Amen. What I did was follow the example in the word of God that when I was talking to the Father, you have to, if God reminds you of something going on in your life that is not right, you have to confess your sins and repent. And then you have to ask the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. So, when you look at Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, a lot of people like to call this book, this book of Acts, but I like to call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit because it tells us in Acts chapter 1, the first verse it says, the first account I made, Theopolis, was a continuous report about all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach. So he's talking about the book of Luke, that those were all the things that Jesus began to do and teach. Amen. And it's telling us that did he begin? So that means if, if you begin something, Jesus is telling us that he this is not the end yet. As long as as long as there is one soul here on earth that God is waiting to come to him to be saved, the end is not yet. So all these works continue to go on and they should be going on in your life. When you look at Acts the third chapter give you some examples here of what I'm talking about. It says in Acts the third chapter, the sixth verse, this is when Peter and John was going to the temple to pray and they saw this lame man in the sixth verse. It says, when Peter said, silver and gold I have not, 
but what I do have, I give to you. See, a lot of people, when they come to you, they want silver and gold. They want some money. But Peter said he don't have this, but he said, in the name, authority, power of Jesus Christ of the Nazarene, begin now to walk and go on walking. So he's telling him that it's in Jesus' name that we do these things. It's not us that's doing it. It's in the power of his name, in the name of Jesus. And then it says, then he seized the man's right hand with a firm grip and raised him up and at once his feet and ankles became strong and steady. And with a leap he stood up and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God. Praise God. So it ain't so much of what we're doing. You know, it ain't about the silver and gold and none of that. It's about in the name of Jesus. It's in his name that all these things continue, what he began in the gospel accounts continue to happen because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and for me. Amen. And he's telling us here in this 14th chapter of John, praise God for his word, if you don't get nothing out of the day, remember this. He says in this 14th chapter, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things. When you look at the fourth chapter of Acts, <clears throat> the ninth verse, It tells us, this is uh, when Peter and John was arrested because of what was going on with this man healed. You remember better going up here to the eighth verse. It says, Then Peter, <clears throat> filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders, of the people, members of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court. If we are being put on trial today to interrog interrogate us for the good deed done to benefit a disabled man as to how this man has been restored to health. So when somebody puts you on the hot seat because of this, it reads on down here, here's what Peter said, let it be known and clearly understood by all of you and by all the people of Israel that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you demanded be crucified by the Romans and whom God raised from the dead in this name, that is, by the authority and power of Jesus, this man stands here before you in good health. Praise God. This Jesus... It's the stone which was despised and rejected by you, the builders, because the Jews rejected Jesus, which, but which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among people by which we must be saved, for God has provided the world no alternative 
for salvation. So that's why I sin. You can be saved and forgiven of your sins in the name of Jesus, what Jesus has done, what God has provided for us. And you can also be healed. Praise God. Look at Acts the fifth, the eighth chapter. Let me give you some, this is all through the book of Acts. Healings. There's a lot of people are sick right now, and this is why their heart is troubled during this holiday season, because they're sick. A lot of people are in hospitals. A lot of people are dying. Amen? But they don't have to. And the eighth chapter of Acts. This is when Philip was down in Samaria. This is Philip the deacon. Amen. It tells us here in the seventh verse, it says, For unclean spirits, demons shouting loudly, were coming out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So he was doing the same thing in the name of Jesus, amen? It wasn't by his mighty works, amen? And then when you look at uh, Acts the ninth chapter, this just goes on and on. It talks about here uh, Peter, what he was doing. If you look at 934, this is Peter's ministry. It said, Peter said to him, and Nidus, Jesus Christ heals you. Do you care this? It's Jesus Christ that does all the healing. In the name of Jesus, this is how we get healed. Get up and make your bed immediately, and Nidus got up. So it's all about, in the name of Jesus Christ, that all these healings occur. Amen. Let me give you just one more of Peter's ministry here. In verse 40, it says, this is Acts 9, 40, but Peter sent them out, all out of the room, and kneeled down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. So this is Tabitha who had died. That in the name of Jesus, <laughs> that she is risen from dead. But he's talking about greater things are we going to do. Greater things. Well, how do we do these greater things? Here's what happened in the, well, at first in this uh Acts the second chapter. Here's what happened over there. It says, uh, in Acts the second chapter, the first verse it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they all together, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing, violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, there appeared on them tongues resembling fire which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. That's how you do these things, by receiving the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled, that is diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. Woo! When you go back to Acts the fourth chapter, I want to give you a verse over there too. Acts 4.4 4 tells us, this is what happens when, you, when, when um, you do everything in the name of Jesus. It says here in Acts 4.4, 4, But many of those who heard the message of salvation, which you're hearing right now, 
believed in Jesus and accepted him as the Christ. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. That's powerful. That's what we're looking at here. We're going to keep telling you about it's all about Jesus. And we're going to let God do the increase in this ministry. We have a few people come over here during the week. But we know that the more people hear the good news about Jesus Christ and about his healing and about all of that, that more people are going to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Then it tells us in Acts 5, 15, this just keeps growing here. It says, to such an extent that they even carried out the sick out into the streets and put them on the cots and sleeping pads so that when Peter came by at the least his shadow might fall on one of them with healing power. So, once you give God the glory and the praise, it's not what I'm doing, it's not what you're doing. It's about what God is doing in your life as well as in my life, that all these greater things and things happen in our life because it's all about the name of Jesus. And then when you go back to John, as we work our way on down through this, let's see how much time we got. Yeah, we got enough time here to give you John 14th chapter, the 13th verse. It says, I will do whatever you ask in my name. It's Jesus talking to us. He said, I will do whatever you ask in my name as my representatives. This is, this I will do so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son. If you ask me anything, anything is anything, right? In my name, as my representatives, I will do it. If you ask me anything in my name, that's the message. Whatever you ask Jesus, amen, whatever you ask, if you ask me anything in my name, he's saying, I will do it. And then he's saying, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. So, John 15, 7 tells us, if you remain in me, this is Jesus, the me is Jesus, and my words remain in you, that is, if you are vi uh, vitally united, and my message lives in your heart, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. So you, you've got to stay in this word. You can't be saying what somebody else is saying, what the world is saying. you got to say what God is saying. It's all in the name of Jesus and through the name of Jesus that we are saved and that we are healed. It's all in the name of Jesus. Amen? It also tells us in this 15th chapter, the 16th verse, he says, I have not, you, he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have appointed and placed and perfectly planted you whew, so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask the Father in my name he may give to you. It's all in the name of Jesus. 
It's all about the name of Jesus. That's why he tells us here in this 14th chapter, the 6th verse, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life and no one comes through the Father but through me. So if we want these miracles in our life, we have to do it in the name of Jesus. First of all, we got to get in Christ ourselves. And then once we are in Christ, then we can pray to the Father in Jesus' name and ask for whatever we want God to do, and he will do it. He will do it. It says, so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son. Y'all have a nice day. God bless you and keep you.